Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. Today, we're gonna go over some TIG welding weaves on aluminum. To all the arc heads who watch the show every week, what's up, welcome back. To anybody that's new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for checking this out. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you jump back and watch some of the previous episodes that I do on this channel. We do everything TIG welding related. So if you're a fan of TIG welding, we do all kinds of TIG welding art projects. We do TIG welding gear breakdowns, gear demos. We break down a lot of TIG welding how-tos and different techniques and stuff like that. So be sure, uh, if you're new to the channel, jump back and check out all those episodes. Uh, there's a ton in the catalog on my page, uh, or you can check the description below. There's a bunch listed there as well. Be sure to follow along on Instagram. My Instagram handle's right there, as well as my website. Uh, you can go on my website. I have a TIG welding blog. I also have all the information on my TIG welding online program. I do an online training program for people where I teach people how to TIG weld online. So you can check out all that information on my website. So today, we're gonna talk about some TIG welding weaves with aluminum. So first off, we'll talk about what a weave is. What is a TIG welding weave? A TIG welding weave is basically a pattern of weld where the pattern of your bead is spread out widthwise as well as length. Lengthwise. And what this is meant to do is it's meant to actually cover a wider path of weld than what a traditional weld bead will tend to cover. So if you're ever running a weld bead and your weld bead, you can turn up your heat as much as you want. You always find out that it reaches a point where your weld bead can only get so wide. And at this point, when your weld bead can't get any wider, this is when we usually tend to switch to a weave pattern. A weave pattern, like I said, it darts side to side as well as lengthwise. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna tend to cover more width as well as length. When you're running a uh, traditional weld bead with traditional settings, like I said, it'll only get so wide. So once you reach this threshold where you can't go any wider with your TIG weld without it blowing out too big or getting too hot, you'll switch to a weave technique. If you ever have a weld bead, uh, like I was saying, where uh, the weld required is gonna be in a wider gap. So uh, I know on a lot of pipe joints and uh, certain setups like that, you may tend to have a root or a root gap uh, where it will require a fatter weld. So if you need to throw a fatter weld in there, instead of cranking your settings up and trying to fill a bunch of weld gap with one pass, what a lot of people will tend to do, especially with pipe uh, and root uh, gaps and things like that, what they'll do is they'll do a root pass where they'll keep a very small TIG pass that is quite hot, will penetrate really well into the root gap. And once they ensure that the root has wetted in properly and got the penetration that they need, on top of it, they usually throw a cap. And for a cap, the best thing to do with a wider weld gap is to do a weave technique. So when I'm doing a weave technique, I tend to do no more than two to three puddles wide. So like I said, if I was gonna run a weld that was the length of this coupon here, what I would tend to do if I was weaving, like I said, I tend not to go more than three steps across. I find if I go more than three steps across, sometimes you'll even see people doing four steps across. Uh, this is just a preference thing. I like to actually split my weaves into a couple weaves at this point. Once I get over three, especially four dabs wide, I tend to find that I'm actually spending way too much time in one area. And I tend to find, especially with stainless steel and things like that, it tends to heat up my plate a little more than I actually want it to. Obviously this is super preferential. Uh, a lot of people will run three, four, five dabs wide um, and it turns out fine. This is just my preference. I definitely prefer, like I said, if I get any anywhere over three dabs wide, I'll split it into two weaves next to each other. This can be called split weaves. Yeah, there's a couple different names that people go by, but basically what it is, instead of doing one big fat run all the way down, you'll tend to see people do a couple weaves next to each other. This helps just to break up the heat a little bit, I find. It gives it more of a period where it can cool in between. And when you're running back and forth over a big joint like that, and you really, really need to make sure you get a proper cap on whatever uh, weld you're covering, it's a little bit better just to break it off into a couple smaller chunks. So that way you can stop, really take a look at how you're doing, uh, readjust, and then do the other half to make sure that you bridge the gap that you need to properly. And again, like I said, just take my preference as is. Uh, if you like doing it differently, let me know below. I actually like hearing how uh, different people do these different techniques. So if you do it differently, or if you tried it and wanna let me know how it went, uh, just leave it in the comments below. I like reading that stuff. So there's actually a couple different ways that you can do a TIG welding weave. So one way that's really popular, you'll see this with a lot of different setups. A lot of people can use this uh, technique in different scenarios, but what they'll do is something called walking the cup. So what they do when they're walking the cup is they actually make contact with the cup up. And obviously this is uh, kind of goofy because I'm just trying to get my camera angle properly. But what they do is they roll their cup back and forth. So they're walking it along the surface of their plate. So instead of sliding or anything like that, uh, what they'll do, like I said, is they'll just use their cup, the edge of the cup, and they'll walk it back and forth. And this way they advance on their weld path by walking the cup like so. 
So you're actually not doing any uh, freehand or any mechanical type stuff yourself uh, that isn't contacting the plate. It's basically a way that they'll just lay the filler rod in front of it and they'll walk the cup over the surface and they'll fill up their weld joint and go along like so. So that's a really awesome technique. You'll see that done a lot with different pipe welding, a lot of different scenarios. People are really, really good at that. That's one I'm actually still trying to get better at. I can do it, I can do it pretty well, but I wanna get even better at it because it looks awesome. <laughs> but the way I'm gonna show you how to do a TIG weave today, this is the way I was taught when I was just a beginner. I was taught that it was really hard to get the perfect roll and the perfect walking technique as well as trying to get the rod in there at the same time. By the time I learned this technique, I was already pretty good at stepping and filling. This is kind of just the next step of uh, working my way up to a TIG weave and it's called the freehand technique. So with the freehand technique, basically it's gonna do the exact same thing that we were just doing with walking the cup, but instead of making contact, we're gonna basically keep our standoff distance like so. Uh, obviously my travel angle is uh, a little exaggerated here just so you can see it properly on camera. But what you're gonna do is this. So we're gonna work our way in a pattern like so. And the pattern is going to advance us across the plate. So instead of making contact and trying to get a perfect rolling technique uh, or walking the cup technique, we're gonna do it freehand. And I'm gonna show you how I do this. So the reason I prefer doing a freehand technique on aluminum especially, like I said, when you're first getting started, it's a little tricky to choreograph rolling the cup as well as uh, timing your fill properly. But one of the main reasons I don't like doing uh, a walking the cup technique on aluminum simply because your cup tends to scratch your material. So we're gonna spend all this time getting a perfect technique and laying down a really nice weld bead with aluminum. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk your cup over it and I really hate seeing my scratches on the nice weld bead that I've just finished. So you can certainly do it, but bear that in mind. If you're gonna try this, your cup will scratch the material that you're running on. And if you're running it over a nice bead that you've just finished doing, you're gonna be scratching it as you go. This is one major reason why I really prefer to do the freehand technique with aluminum. So there's a couple really, really interesting things out there nowadays for learning a weave technique. There's a company that makes these plates that you can order online. They're basically aluminum plates like so. You can get them in stainless steel, mild steel, uh, but they're called weave trainers. So I'll show them on screen right now and I'll put a link to this in the description below because these are really awesome. Basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a layout pattern that's been etched onto the material uh, with a laser cut or water cut. I'm not sure how they cut them. But what this does is it actually lays out a perfect path for you. It'll show you on the plate what lines to follow along and it's actually gonna show you little spots where you need to add your filler rod. Shout out to the YouTube channel Fabrication Series. Uh, the guy's name is Justin. I chat to him a little bit online. Super nice guy, go check out his channel. He's actually got a really good video where he's trying these weave trainers out as well. So be sure to bounce on over to the Fabrication Series and say what's up to Justin. Tell him I sent you. So these things are cool. Like I said, they actually come right out of the box, ready to go. All you gotta do is clean them and then you start welding on them. And it's gonna teach you the pattern of how you're gonna do that weave technique. As you can see on screen now, I'll show a picture of one of these things. It's cool, like I said, it's all laid out there for you real clear. So if you look at it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna start and then it's gonna go down and across and it's basically gonna make these diagonal patterns across the width of the weld bead. What I like doing, I'll show you a weld on screen right now. This is some random weave I did uh, on a piece of pipe a while ago. Uh, I also got some plate. I'll show you a couple of pictures of uh, weave on plate. But if you notice, I don't have any diagonal movements uh, across the weld width. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to lay out uh, a practice plate so you can learn how to do this yourself. So what I've done here is I've actually drawn the exact pattern that I usually draw on a coupon when I'm first teaching someone how to learn this technique. So what you have here is basically you only have a line to follow that's lengthwise and lines that are square to the lengthwise path of the weld. So again, like I said, this is complete preference. <laughs> I'm not saying that the diagonal pattern is uh, something you shouldn't do. Do it, I don't care, that's awesome. But what you do is you can actually lay it out yourself or get those weave trainers or something like that. So you have a little pattern that you can follow along. It's gonna help you out a lot, especially if you're just learning, because I'm gonna show you a little technique right now of how I practice this before we actually arc on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretend that I'm about to arc up. So I'm gonna have my uh, torch at the proper torch angle, everything nice and comfortable. Then I'm gonna have my filler rod ready to go. And basically, I'm just gonna pretend that I'm in the middle of a weld path here. So, if I arc up, bzz, here I go, I'm arcing up, now we're welding. What I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna start at the top of our U or W pattern here. So I'm gonna basically do my first dab here. I'm gonna dab up top, pretend that I've just dabbed, and then I'm gonna move down, I'm gonna dab, I'm gonna go advance, and then back up to the top, and dab again. Dab, advance, up to the top, dab, dab, advance, up to the top, dab, dab. 
So when you're moving like that, basically what we're doing is we're following our pattern. Like I said, where the pattern is a bunch of horizontal and vertical lines, as opposed to uh, a line that goes lengthwise and diagonal lines to that. What it's gonna do is it's gonna get you a pattern that's really dead square. Another reason that I like doing this is because I find with a diagonal pattern, I tend to get too much gap in between the dabs. What happens when you get too much gap in between your dabs is you're gonna increase your chances for underfill, uh, a lack of fill, whatever you wanna call it. That's just a preference thing, but that's what I like seeing when I teach someone. Okay, so now we've been over everything as far as our setup. Let's uh, turn our machine on, we'll go over some settings. Then what we'll do is we'll run a demo. Okay, so I just switched on my Canaweld 201 Pulse D. Uh, this machine is dope. Shout out to all the people at Canaweld. I really, really like this little build. Uh, if you haven't already, check out uh, the link in my description. I did a full review on this bad boy. We broke down pretty much everything to do with it. So uh, check that out. It's in the description below. But uh, basically what we're running here is pretty simple settings. We're on AC, alternating current. I'm running a foot pedal. I got about, let's see what I got for settings, about 145 amps on the panel here. No downslope, about four seconds of post flow. I'm running about 35% on the positive side of the balance. And running about 100 hertz on the frequency. Okay, so now we got the machine set up. Uh, for gas, we're gonna be running 100% pure argon. Um, and we're gonna be running about 20 CFH through the regulator uh, on working pressure. Now let's go over the torch setup here real quick. So the torch I'm gonna be using uh, is basically a air-cooled torch um, and it is running a number eight cup. This is a Furic number eight and uh, it's a running a 332 tungsten setup inside. So the tungsten is a 2% lanthanated tungsten. Uh, this tungsten I tend to find Works really, really good for aluminum. I got a little ball on the end of it there. That's the setup I prefer going with, so that's what we're gonna use. And our plate here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna freestyle it. Uh, I haven't laid my uh, template out on it for the pattern I'm gonna follow, but it's been wire brushed. I hit it with acetone, it's pretty clean, so we're gonna go for it on this plate here. It's 3 16 of an inch thick, that's 4.6 millimeters. And uh, yeah, that's the plate we're gonna use for this guy. Like I said, we're not gonna lay out the pattern on it like I was talking about, I'm just gonna freestyle it, but for reference, this is the pattern we're gonna use here. All right, so we're good to go. Let's get the fan going on the machine here. Another one of my favorite things about this machine is the fan turns off, you don't use it after a minute or so, and then you turn it back on when you want. Cuts down on the noise a little bit, it's nice. Okay, so on the plate here, you can see I actually did scribe little lines to follow just for my length. I just wanna make sure that I don't get too wide or too thin in areas, so I'm just gonna follow those lines along there. But yeah, let's go for it. So I'm just gonna run as far as I can here, make sure I can see everything really clearly. Like I said, quarter of an inch in between each advance, so we'll just go with that pattern on this plate here. Here we go, hold on to your butts.
Whew, that was a long one. Our arms are tired. Let's take a look and see how she went. All right, so overall here, first uh, impressions, I can see everything went pretty well as far as how I wanted it to turn out. So let's take a look. So like I said, I drew a few little lines to follow here as far as where my center line was and as far as where my width was. And overall, I did follow the line pretty well. Everything, if you look down at lengthwise like so, our wetted edge stayed pretty straight the whole way, which is nice, even though you are gonna have some little dips in and out as you go through your pattern like so. Overall, we did follow the line pretty well. Overall, another thing that I like looking at is my puddle spacing. Like I said, I just freestyled this one. I just went off eyeball to see what my distance was in between each puddle. Uh, each puddle ended up turning out, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, there's a couple spots, maybe I would have tightened up a little bit near the end here. Uh, however, overall, the consistency of it is pretty good. And that's what you're gonna be looking for there. Now, like I said, when you get too far apart, if you're adding too many, uh, if you're adding too many dabs or adding dabs that are too far apart, you're gonna get an empty pocket in the middle here. Now we don't have that because we have a pattern that's a little bit tighter. So the pattern that stayed a little bit tight is gonna prevent those pockets in between each dab. So again, looking at it like so, you can see everything's tightened up pretty good. We have our pattern that goes from side to side in a horizontal type manner instead of the diagonal type manner that you see with a lot of uh, patterns. Again, that's just preference. You guys and girls can do whatever you want. Just do whatever's comfortable. Just make sure that it's even. Make sure that your puddles are nice and tight so you don't have too much gap in between. Obviously, that's a preference thing, but just try and keep it from getting too far apart. And you just wanna pay attention to your width, your wetted edges. Make sure your wetted edges is uh, wetted in nice and, nice and evenly, and that's what you're looking for. Overall, if we were to take a ruler and throw a ruler across the top here, you can see our reinforcement. Uh, reinforcement also means height of your weld uh, is about 332 of an inch. Eh, say braid about there. It's under an eighth, so under th about three mil and under, it's uh, going to be pretty good. And that's what you're kind of looking for there. So there's a little demo on how I do my TIG weaves. Obviously, you can try it for yourself and see what you like. So if you watch this and uh, you feel inspired to try this out for yourself, give it a whirl. Hit me up on social media. Again, my social media handle is right there. You can add me on Instagram, hit me up through message. You can just tag me in your work, that's cool. I love seeing how people do with these exercises. So if you give it a whirl, even if you get stuck, if you want some help, uh, hit me up. I might, uh, I'll try and help you out if I can. Uh, again, you can go on my website, you can check out my uh, online program where I try and help people out. Uh, we do stuff similar to this. It's a little more intense. We break down the basics uh, of welding. So it's kind of like what we've done here, but a little more simple. So it's good for beginners to get a good start with. But again, this is just the way I do it. If you do it differently, that's awesome. Matter of fact, I'd love to see how you do it. So again, comment below. I'd like to see uh, how you learned how to do it. Did you use weave trainers? Did you just freestyle it and do it like I did here today? Um, let me know. I love chatting with people. I love seeing how people do different stuff like this. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. This one was a lot of fun. It's nice to strike some marks and just goof around a little bit. But again, say what's up to me online. Uh, check out my other videos on my channel. Uh, everybody out there who's watching, I hope you're doing good. I hope everything's cool where you live. And do something nice for a stranger today. So everyone, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a good one. Peace.